Hello everyone, welcome to Pentacle Math Mania. My name is Captain Is123, and today we will learn how to tell time with an analog and a digital clock. Today we're going to look at activities we can do at certain times of day. When we wake up, we have breakfast in the morning, lunch in the middle of the day, and dinner in the evening. We sometimes wake up at the same time in the morning and go to bed at the same time at night. Time is very important as it helps us to measure day and night. Time is also how we measure things that happened already, like events. The time period of events that already happened is called the past, whereas the time period of events that are happening right now is called the present. What about the time period of events that will happen? Yes, you guessed right, that's called the future. Time is measured in minutes and hours. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 24 hours in a day. Half day, or 12 of those 24 hours, make up the morning period, and the other half, or the other 12 hours, make up the afternoon and evening. Clocks are used to measure time, and there are two different types of clocks that show the time, which are analog clocks and digital clocks. Analog clocks have two hands, a long and a short hand, while digital clocks have numbers only. Let's talk about analog clocks for a while. Analog clocks have 12 numbers on them, which represent the hours of the day, and there are dashes in between those numbers that represent how many minutes are in an hour. So how do we use those dashes and numbers to measure time? Well, let me show you. The short hand points to the hour and is called the little hand. The long hand points to the minutes and is called the long hand or the big hand. By using both hands, we can tell the time. Here are some examples. If the short hand is pointing to five, then it's five o'clock. If the little hand is pointing to one, then it's one o'clock. If the short hand is pointing to nine, what time is it? Did you guess nine o'clock? Because that's correct. But did you notice anything else? When the short hand is on a number, the long hand must be on 12 at the same time for it to be that exact time. Can you see the dashes on the clock between the numbers? Each dash represents one minute and there are a total of five dashes between each number. So that means that five minutes pass between each number. So when the long hand moves from, let's say, 12 to one, five minutes have passed. And if it moves from one to two, another five minutes has passed, giving us a total of 10 minutes. We can calculate time easily by knowing that from 12 to one is five minutes, from 12 to two is 10 minutes, and then from 12 to three is 15 minutes if we're looking at the long hand's movement. Can you count in fives as we go around the clock? If the long hand is pointing to the two, what time is it? Remember to count by fives. So from 12 to one is five minutes. So from 12 to two, that's five plus five, that's 10 minutes have passed. And the short hand is pointing on six, which means it's six o'clock. But let's put those two together. The time will be 6.10 on a digital clock or 10 minutes past six on the analog clock. Let's do another. Our long hand is on seven and our short hand is on four. Our short hand tells us that it's four o'clock, but our long hand, let's count in fives. That's 35 minutes past four. Let's look at another example. Our long hand is on three and our, our short hand is on nine. That's 15 minutes past nine. And our last example, our long hand is on 10 and our short hand is on six. Remember, the short hand tells the hour, so that tells us it's six o'clock and our long hand is on 10. Hmm. If our long hand is on 10, let's count in fives from 12. That's 50 minutes. That's 50 minutes past six or 6.50 on a digital clock. Did you get those correct? 
Thank you for visiting Math City today. I had so much fun learning how to tell time with an analog and digital clock. Try the exercises on penacool.com to earn points and win great prizes.